All right, while well, Tom's being checked out at this time, I'll introduce to you in the red corner, already in the ring. He is the Southeastern middleweight champion. He's 32 years of age, 5'10", 185 pounds from Johnsonville, North Carolina. Fights for Team ROC with a record of 12 and seven. Again, the champion of the Southeastern middleweight Romez of Brower, red corner. His opponent, 31 years of age, 5'10", 185 pounds, out of Grantville, Georgia, fighting for X3 Sports, with a record of six wins, one loss. Tom Wynn, blue corner. Welcome to round one. Again, this is the co-main event scheduled for three five-minute rounds. It's our 12th fight of the night, main event coming your way. Let's hear it, Wild Bills. This is what you've been waiting on. Bills, Wild Bills Fight Night 13, Full Throttle Entertainment, brought to you by Hooters, No Excuses Sports Nutrition. We got <laughs> Tom Wynn, Romez Brower. This was a war last time. I'm excited to see this. I'm Kyle Maynard sitting here with Cliff Fretwell. This is going to be an exciting fight, ladies and gentlemen. This Co is co-main event, Tom Wynn, red hair, <laughs> Romez Brower, camouflage shorts. Romez is the kind of guy that'll take any fight anywhere. The guy's fought Gideon Ray. He's fought uh, Ed Herman, UFC veterans. Decent, he's got he, solid stand-up skills. Stood there and traded with um, Tom Wynn last time. Tom Wynn's pro boxer. I mean, yeah, the guy's. Romeo's brought, he's been in there with some tough guys. He's fought Crafton Wallace. He, I mean, he's, he's he beat David Hewitt, who's no slouch himself. Real tough guy. Um, this, guy's, this, guy's, this guy's fought some who's who of, 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 of MMA. He actually, um, Romez is a, uh, He's controlling the clinch right here, but he's he his day job is he's a he's a barber. He cuts hair outside of uh, Fort Bragg, works about 12-hour days, and then trains at night. The guy is just he's he's got terrific athleticism. He's um you know he's willing to take the fight anywhere, wherever it goes, whether it's standing up or on the ground in the clinch. Well, Tom, Tom Wynn's definitely been training a lot for this. I, I was talking to his trainer Kevin Gittemeyer, and uh, they they've trained specific things that that Tom. You know, they felt like Tom needed to work on that he didn't do in the first fight. And uh, Tom's got a good wrestling background. Uh, he, me and him actually wrestled uh, at the same time in high school, different teams. So he, he's definitely got some, he's definitely got a good bit of wrestling background. So he's he's working in the clinch here, but he's not being as active as I'd like him to be in the clinch, working for a takedown or working to get to cut loose like his corner's asking him to. I think, you know, it's, it's gonna, a lot of it's going to be, like uh, we had discussed previously, you know, just cutting down on some of these, you know, just useless scrambles where he was just overpowered by Romez in the last fight. Right. Last fight went to the judges. It was, um, I believe, a unanimous decision in favor of Romez, but it was 29-28. Tom handily won the second round with some stand-up, solid striking, and Romez was just able to, to secure a takedown and, and uh, work from Tom's guard, you know, and didn't really land too many dangerous shots are getting too many dangerous submissions, but they kept a solid pace the whole right. time. He, he, Tom really needs to pummel out of this clinch. He needs to pummel out of the clinch instead of clamping down on the body. He needs to get his right arm in and, and get it up under and underhook Romez's left arm and just pummel out. Romez is just smothering him here, taking cheap, sh taking pot shots with it with the knees. They're not really doing any damage, but in the judge's eyes, Romez is 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 trying to inflict damage and he's controlling where Tom is. Exactly. He's not going to hit that inside trip on, on Romez. I think that, that yeah, Romez is doing a good job of keeping his hips back from that, you know, that inside trip. Romez is just a powerful guy. If you look at the size of his back here and how wide he is, I mean, he's he's really uh, he's he's gonna fight hard. He doesn't want to be on his back. I've actually I've seen quite a few of his fights, and right. um, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever seen him in his guard before. Yeah, um, Tom. Tom needs a pummel out of here. He's trying to force the outside and the inside trip. He needs a circle with his left underhook and get off the ropes. There you go. 
This is where Tom, Tom's Tom gonna have that advantage. Boxing here. Tom just needs a boxing here. He's in great shape. Kevin Gittermeyer's training for this fight. They've been training for two, three months. Oh, Romez Brower catches him with a catch him with a right hook there, it looked like. Tom's still trying to force this inside trip. Like we said, Tom wins a accomplished pro boxer, five and one. Uh, before he fought Romez, he was coming off a big win over, over Todd Carney that nobody thought he would win. And he actually, he, fin he finished the fight pr pretty uh, pretty impressively over Todd Carney. Um, he should be able to do something here on, on you know, against the rope side. He's got the, the double underhooks. He's gonna wear himself out here. Romez is clamped down with double overhooks unless he steps in deep. And, and gets a low body lock and get his hips close to uh, close to uh, Romez's hips. He's just going to waste a bunch of energy here, bullying uh, Romez around the ring. Andy Foster might eventually step in and and, and, and get these guys to break up because they're really not doing much here. Yeah, almost Tom, exclusively Tom could throw, work from the clinch. Yeah, Tom could throw right elbows over the top here if he wanted to. I believe that's what the instruction Kevin Getemeyer's instructors. In, in his corners, he's Roll, telling him to do here. Roll, is he needs to show those, those those short shots, you know, and, and work inside yeah, the clutch. That was there. a nice elbow. Tom had a nice elbow then, but he needs to get his hips in. Now, notice how Romez immediately gets his hips away with the overhooks. He just needs to box him here. Just throw that jab out there, measure him, and then try to get your shots off. His corners just telling him, yeah, yelling at him to box. It's where he needs to be. He needs to keep this edge. He needs to steal this round right here. Tom can steal this round. I think look, he may have with a look, couple of those flurries looked there. Looked like Romez was rocked a little bit there at the end of the round. That's going to be the end of round one. I think it was more of a glancing blow. <laughs> Romez, is a, he's a tough guy to finish. I mean, you know, like I said, he's not really exclusive with anybody. You're training full time. He just, he's, he's got to devote himself to, uh, to having a real life, a real job. And Tom's the same way. He runs a uh, software development company. Yeah, um, but both of these guys, I think, honestly, that the first round looked like they both came out and gave each other a little too much respect. It was like the rematch. One was trying to see what the other one's game plan was going to be, and it was kind of an eventful first round. Romez called Tom with a with a shot early, and maybe a couple of shots later on, Tom caught him with a glancing shot late in the fight. Um, pretty even fight, but I, judges are probably going to give it to Romez, A, because he controlled the clinch a little bit more and kept Tom pinned up against the ropes. That's not necessarily finishing the fight or causing damage, but you, you either score it even or you got to pick a guy. Yeah, it could be. It could go either way. That last flurry there by Tom could, could send the round his way. Could have stalled the round. Could have stalled the round. That's the last thing the judges saw um, was, was Tom being active. So it looks like uh, he got some well-needed instruction from his corner. He's going to come out and try to uh, try to push the pace here. There it goes. I think he needs to stay he out of that body out, lock. Yeah, he needs to stay out of he, this He's clinch. the one that's jumping in and forcing that. You know, it'd, it'd be a lot better, in my opinion. You know, it's, it's hard to be an armchair quarterback in this situation, but, you know, I, I think he needs to stay back and just stand there and, and box him. You know, that, who knows? Maybe he's felt Romez's power and, and doesn't want to be in that spot. If Tom's going to stay here, I would honestly, and I, I know Kevin, it, it, the guy that trains him, Kevin Gittemeyer, is actually, uh, uh, would, it's trained, it, it's trained the strategy is kneeing the guy's legs, taking, it, taking his legs away from him um, and really working on his legs, but you got to have, you got to have Brower in the position that uh, Tom's in right now. And uh, Brower's controlling the fight again. And uh, although uneventful, he, he's still controlling the fight. Uh, uh, Tom spun him off the ropes here, but Tom's got to be active now. You know, a, a good spot here would be the perfect time for Tom to push off the hips, create some space, and, and then and, and I think I think Romez needs to be more active here too. I mean, we're talking a lot about what Tom needs to do, but I mean, if Romez is going to push the pace and, and and try to finish Tom, then he needs to get out of this clinch situation too. He's not going to finish him with a knee to the body. You know, he's not going to finish him in a clinch situation. Uh, it, it, he needs to. He need. They both need to get out of this clinch if they if they plan on finishing the fight. You know, that's that's one thing that a lot of uh, a lot of people don't understand is that. You know, there's, there's clinch fighting here. There's there's three ranges of fighting, and this is one of the you know a, a major range here. You yeah. got the stand up range, and then you got the clinch, and then the ground game. And this but, work from the clinch is a whole art in itself. But yeah, but nobody's really being active from the clinch. That that's that's what both corners are, are screaming and yelling about. Tom's starting to be a little bit more active, but Romez is just kind of content to overhook, underhook, push him into the corner, and, and neither guys are really being active here. You know, I think the thing that you're right goes back to the respect thing, and you know, partially. 
I've had the experience before, you know, when you train with somebody all the time and you step in there against them in competition, right. you know what they're capable of, you, uh, you know, you, you probably know what they're gonna be going for. And, um, you know, you almost just, you're too hesitant right. to pull the trigger on something. When you don't know the person, you can go out there and, you know, throw some, throw, he needs throw, to throw, take some chances and, he and needs then, uh, I, they're just, I think they're giving too, too much respect to one another. Yeah, Tom needs to pummel out and be active. So does Romez. Romez doesn't need to stay in this clinch either. He might be winning the round, but he's not going to finish the round. And in a fight like this where guy, both guys really aren't doing much, you don't want to leave that in the judges. You definitely don't want to leave that in the judges' hands. Andy Foster, um, honestly, if I was in Andy Foster's shoes, I might have even broken him up by now. Um, yeah. and started them back center and told them to be active. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, these guys are, are, are here to entertain the crowd as well as fight. And right now, they're they're kind of just hanging in this clinch here. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's, it's a tough, tiring spot to be, and that's kind of yeah, one absolutely. thing that people don't understand. And it? there goes Tom. Romez looking to counter punch here. Tom's unloading here. Wild Bill's fight night 13. We got Tom win. Romez oh, Brower. Bro, Tom landed. Tom got a shot, and then Romez right landed hand. one right back. Nice flurry there. I think that's one reason why. I mean, we just saw why these guys are both content with staying in the clinch. Both Tom, of them have knockout Tom, power. Tom's starting to figure this out and get his distance and get out of the clinch, but it, it was it was kind of even in the last exchange. Romero was, Romero was counter punching, but he landed a solid shot too. Nice flurry. Romez Tom's is ducking catching his him head. with some shots. Tom's able to avoid those, those looping punches Romez is coming back with and firing. Romez but. is definitely in counter punch mode, but he's, he's landing a couple. Wild Bill's fight night 13. Cliff Fredwell, Kyle Maynard here with you. Wild Bill's uh, country club. Brought to you by Full Throttle Entertainment. We got 185 pound pro rematch. Romez Brower, Tom Wynn. Tom Wynn, red hair, Romez Brower, camouflage shorts. Tom loading up heavy with that left, straight left hand. Now the crowd's starting to get into a lot of clinching earlier, a lot of chest matching earlier, if you will. And uh, Tom's finally able to work that southpaw a little bit and go yeah. ahead and go in there and land those left shots. Uh, those, those, that left hand needs to start, start letting loose. Romez is keeping his hands a little bit lower. He's, he's looking to counter punch and clinch here, and Tom's looking to stay active. I think Tom's definitely controlled this round and probably won this round, but he can't let up and relax as we saw in the first round. Tom could have stole the round from Romez, as Romez could steal the round now. Short time. Oh, They're Romez is landing here. some shots. Yeah, Romez, Romez landed, landed one two, two there. tough shots there at the end. I think it's one apiece going into the third round. I think so too, and I, you know this is almost the exact same situation that we were in last time. You know, in the, in the last fight, Tom was able to win the second round. Romez had taken the first, and in that third round, Romez just kept kept going after him, wearing him down, and, and finally uh, got the judge's decision. And, it, and if you also notice, just to point out a, a, a subtle detail of uh, boxing. The guys always sit down in between rounds because there's, they're long rounds. Uh, you, 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 they're shorter. They're, they're, it's a longer duration of the fight. They're shorter rounds, but you fight for a longer period of time. MMA, longer rounds, uh, uh, you know, shorter period of time. Um, you'll notice Tom Wynn standing up and Romance Brower sitting down. A lot of guys prefer to stand up because when you sit down and then when you stand back up, your heart has to catch back up to pump the blood to the rest of your body because you were sitting down and it can cause you to fatigue a little bit quicker. Um, so just a subtlety there about uh, different things. You'll see a lot of Muay Thai fighters and kickboxers stand up in between rounds. Uh, a, because their legs are taking damage, but B, when your heart speeds back up, when you stand back up, sometimes that can play a role in how you fatigue in, in, in the round. That's really, that's an interesting, that's an interesting way to put it. I never thought about that. I won't be bringing a stool to a fight anytime soon nah. after hearing that. <laughs> I won't charge you for that tip. <laughs> Wild Bill's fight night 13, third round, Tom Wynn, Romez Brower, I'm Cliff Frewell here with Kyle Maynard, Full Throttle Entertainment. And look, we're, in our opinion, it's it's one apiece. Romez Brower controlled the first round, kind of uneventful. Second round started out uneventful, but uh, Tom Wynn started breaking the clinch and pushing the boxing pace. Uh, and it looks like this round's gonna decide the fight of the rematch. Tom's able to go back and do the same thing. He's trying to work the hand control right here and pummel off. He needs, to, he needs to use that underhook and escape. He's looking for the takedown there instead of the break. 
Inside trip might be there, but Romez has clamped down heavy with those overhooks. It's really hard to, to trip a guy when he's got those overhooks like that and his hips away. Like I said, we, we had talked about uh, Tom. Tom was a high school wrestler. Um, and uh, it, it, it's obvious that Romez has trained some grappling, if not wrestled himself. I mean, it's going to be hard to take a guy down. But look how active Tom is. Romez Brown Tom's catches finally him. throwing some heavy shots in that yeah, clinch there. Romez caught him back with a, with a counter punch. But I'll tell you, Tom Wynn's got a beard on him. And uh, Romez does, too, because he's taken quite a few shots in this fight as well. Still working for the clinch. Romez hasn't really done anything to try to take him down. You see Tom working those inside trips. Romez is controlling him and controlled the ring. But, you know, ring control, is, right. is, is that a much of a factor as, um, you know, trying to pump him away, trying to work for the boxing? I mean, right. it's hard, hard to say. It's hard for the judges. 185-pound pros. Uh, Romez Brower, camouflage shorts, fighting out of Team Rock, North Carolina. Uh, Tom Wynn, Gainesville, Georgia. Grantville, Georgia, my bad. Uh, fighting out of X3 gym in Marietta. X3 Tom, there, training with Kevin Gittemeyer, Tony Tucci. You got some some great guys down there. They're, they're James setting up a Black really Lake good program. Thorbs out there. Exactly. They got, they got they got a decent stable of fighters, and um, uh, as Romez does, training with Team Rock up in North Carolina. If he if either of these guys are wanting to finish the fight, they've got to break this clinch. They're not going to finish the fight in the clinch, throwing body knees. Um, I really look for Tom to just throw that uh, that left underhook to the ce ceiling and just spin out of this clinch here. If he Rome did, if he went and, yeah, and then spun to his right, use that underhook. Oh! oh! Tom Wynn finally gets the takedown he was looking for. Uh, he had been working the whole fight, probably about 12 minutes of this fight to get the takedown. He finally got it, and let's see what he does on top against Romez Brower. Just as we said before, you know, he, he, <laughs> we were talking about him working for that inside trip. Looked like he got a little bit of a foot sweep there on that yeah. one, kind of a prop. Yeah, it was more of a it was more of a knee block slash foot sweep than it was a trip. But uh, uh, look for Tom to be busy here, and look for Romez to try to clamp down and hopefully get a stand up. This is a position I've never seen Romez fight from before. Yeah, you had mentioned that earlier in the fight. This will be interesting to see how he's able to react from this. Tom, you know, was working from an open guard for a while. Romez has got it closed now. I just seems he, like he's been he's pretty burst in jiu-jitsu. It's hard to tell so far. Tom hasn't really done Tom's much. Tom's looking to pass. for a pass here. Andy Foster, our referee, having to jump up on the ropes, a little high-flying acrobat on the ropes there. Guards open. Tom in looking to pass. He's looking at, he's firing hammer fist down the middle. They kind of been blocked by Romez. Romez counters. Look, look like for a second, Tom might be thinking about falling back for a heel hook, but he might just be trying to stuff that foot through. Yeah, I think Tom's trying to, trying to posture up. I mean, he needs to do something with this open guard here. Either Romez is baiting him to try to come into a half guard position or, or he's just leaving it open there out of fatigue. Tom's corner's yelling one minute. They want him to finish strong. He needs to posture up and look to throw some blows here. He's trying to stuff those legs by. If he can What's stuff it? that knee and come through and pass and here. Tom's looking exactly to stuff the knee. Oh, he's got side control. Nice pass by Tom. He's looking to, he's going to look to. The mount is open. The mount's wide open. I don't think Tom wants to take him out. Uh, he, he trains a ton of side control. Romez has got him locked down. Tom needs to circle him to the, circle him to the middle of the middle of the ring, sit through with his left hip, and then he can rain elbows down, and that way Romez can't chase his bottom leg and hook him. But Tom really needs to throw some bows here and uh, and finish the round strong, put an exclamation point on the fight, and hopefully win the fight. You know, R Romez, it looked like he had, uh, you know, really there with that open guard. I wasn't really sure if that had just been a jiu-jitsu inexperience. If, you know, that closed guard, no matter what, whether you're a uh, you know a white belt or a black belt, it's much harder to pass that right. guard when somebody's closing their guard. Short time here in the, in the fight, I, I got to give it to Romez. Even though Tom passed and got side control, uh, he did a good job of clamping him down and actually got a sweep there, just powered out a sweep. It'll be interesting to Ro see this. We Romez got another one going to the judges again. Romez slaps the, the the apron of the ring like he knows he lost the fight. I, I, you know, on my card, I'd have to give it to. Uh, I have to give it to Tom, two rounds to one. Not, not a very action-packed fight. Not a lot of submission attempts. Actually, not a ton of uh, flurries. But uh, it, had a, it had a pretty climactic ending there with a little scramble, a couple sweeps. Tom got a guard pass. Uh, 
We're here with UFC uh, veteran Roy Singer. Roy, <laughs> would, would you like to comment on, on the fights this far this evening? The fights so far have been fantastic. This fight here with uh, Tom and whoever this guy is. I don't even know anybody's name. Romance Brower. Romance yep. Brower. Uh, with Romance Brower from Team Rock. It was uh, action-packed. And, uh, <laughs> you're and fantastic, but I gotta give the edge to Tom. I saw about two rounds and a half, and I think Tom won at least two rounds, so unanimous 29-28 if I were the judge. I'd have to see it along the same way. I, I think I gotta agree with Roy Singer, even though that might be the first well, of time I've- Of course you have to agree with me. I've I'm never agreed freaking Singer. I've never agreed with him before in my entire life. <laughs> this is the first time. Tom is walking. So I have Roy Singer. <laughs> we, we did not rent a, a, a Roy Singer Enterprise lookalike tonight. This is really Roy Singer. He, Roy Singer in person actually costs the same as the guy that looks like Roy Singer to come. At this time, Andy Foster will bring both the fighters from the co-main event into the center ring. Again, it was scheduled for three five-minute rounds. It went the distance. Both of these fighters have a lot of mutual respect for each other. Judge A saw 28-29. Judge B, 27-30. C, 28-29. Unanimous decision. The win goes to Blue Corner, Tom Wynn. Tom Wynn, Grantville, Georgia, X3 Sports. Blue Corner takes the win now with a record of seven and one. Let's hear it for his opponent, Romance Brower.